the 2015 Infiniti Q50S all-wheel drive. How does it perform? What's the interior like? What's it like overall compared to the Lexus ES, its major rival? I'll see you guys on the other side of that intro. Hit that subscribe button and let's do this. Here's the 2015 Infiniti Q50S all-wheel drive. It's a great car, uh, but let's just get into the history of it real quick. In 2014, <clears throat> this replaced the G37, which is a great line of sedans by Infiniti. It's also known as the Skyline in Japan. The funny thing about that, it's not an Infiniti or a Nissan, even though it has the Infiniti badge on it. They just call it the Skyline there. This has a 3.7 liter V6 with a seven speed automatic transmission. It does zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds. It's very, very quick and respectable for a, uh, a luxury sedan. And then in 2016, they re refreshed the Q60. Uh, it's pretty much better in every way. I've driven one, a 2018, to compare to the 2019 ES. Um, and that car has a turbo, etc. But this car also had an optional hybrid uh, with a little bit more horsepower. It was definitely quicker, about a second quicker to 60 than this, which is very phenomenal. Let's just get into the styling real quick. I love the styling of this car. I think it looks better than the Lexus ES pre-2019. So. Lexus ES, let's just compare it to a 2015 ES. I think this uh, G50 looks better, sorry, Q50. Confusing the G37 and G35. The Q50 looks better, in my opinion, than the Lexus ES. These headlights are awesome. The grill's awesome, has a very wide and strong stance to it. I like the chrome accent around the grill. Infinity logo, I don't mind it. You know, it's okay. It's very recognizable, in my opinion. It always rem has reminded me of like a mountain peak. I don't know what you guys think. These wheels, I've never been a big fanity, <laughs> fanity, fan of Infinity wheels. They look okay. They're a little dirty. Again, this car is used. It has a few miles on it. We have some huge uh, brake calipers up front. Uh, these tires and wheels, let me see real quick. P245 by 40 by 19 inch wheels. They look really good. You have that strong 3.7 liter on the side. As I'm going to back up, we have some chrome on the handles. And then we have chrome around the windows as well. Very, very strong yet curvaceous lines on the car. They're not, they're hard, but they're not like very sharp edged like you see on our Lexus. Uh, products. They're a little bit softer, but very, very strong. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the E, the, the 2019 ES with its its styling. It's a little bit more subdued than that car, though. The rear end, it looks okay. I think the front looks a lot better. The rear end of this car looks a little bit soft compared to that strong front end. It still looks good. And then you have that nice dual exhaust down there as well. Let's see what it looks like from the rear quarter panel here. Very, very good. Looks great, uh, it's, and like I said, in my opinion, it looks better than the ES uh, of its time period. But let's get on the inside and see how it compares to the ES in terms of luxury interior. Underneath the Q50, we have a V6 variable valve event and lift, if I remember right, from my uh, G37 review. It's the same exact engine. It always looks really good. It's a little dirty, we got a little splash on her. Has not been through detail. Presentation's great. I like the Infinity logo on it, uh, and then the V6, and then they're proud of their uh, variable valve timing event and lift technology. Again, this car has about 328 horsepower, 269 foot-pounds of torque, and that's at 7,000 RPM. So it's a very, very high revving car or revving engine, uh, albeit being a 3.7, which is a pretty large engine as well. Uh, this is mated to the seven-speed uh, gearbox, automatic gearbox, which does a really good job, especially uh, in accelerating from a stop. This transmission does a really good job getting this car up to speed very quickly. Downshifts on the highway, they're not bad. I'd give it maybe like a B. Uh, they're a little bit slow to find the right gear, but it does a good job once it's in that gear. This, this puppy goes. Q50S, spacious. Let's turn this car on. Not the highest quality start button. It's very similar to the Nissan products. Um, 
but our Lexus start buttons are very similar to the Toyota products. I just like theirs better. It's just a preference thing. It doesn't look bad or anything. Uh, it just could be, could be a little bit more luxurious feeling other than just having a chrome circle around it. Materials on the inside. Kind of what I expect from Infinity. They're not terrible. They, they feel a little bit better than a non-luxury car. Uh, but they're definitely not on the same level as Lexus, that is for sure. You have this plastic trim here, which we see in some of our, our uh, lower end vehicles. You see plastic trim, but uh, the design on this is pretty basic. Uh, it doesn't look bad. It's just, I'll give it, get you guys a close up of that. Soft touch here at the top. Nice leather armrest here. And I do like this design here, this kind of uh, striped lines on the, the door, leather material. All automatic windows, I do appreciate that. Here are your windows. It's my bolstering. So we have a bolster control, uh, and I'm not gonna adjust the seat much more. It's pretty comfortable for me. So there you can see the, da the, the signals. They look a little cheesy, in my opinion. You have these over design here. The car doesn't need it. Um, you see the range. Um, you're gonna have different information. All I'm doing is pressing this button here on the steering wheel to, to display different information. I like that one that's very similar to my Lexus. Uh, you know, infotainment screens. This screen though is a little bit lower resolution than our Lexus screens, but it looks well, it looks good and I can see really well on it. Uh, we have some buttons over here, phone control, menu control. Steering wheel feels okay. To be honest, it doesn't feel much more luxurious uh, than uh, like a Toyota steering wheel. Paddle shifters. These might be some of the longest paddle shifters. I'll give them a, a grade A. Uh, I wouldn't call them as good as Lexus, but they're very, they're easy to get to. Um, and and I, I'm really picky about where my paddle shifters are, and these are in a very good spot. Now they are a little slender, I would like them to be a little bit wider, but they are pretty good overall. I do appreciate that. Infinity kind of, it's, it's unique, but let's keep moving. Uh, we have a touch screen here for your navigation. I'm not going to mess with that. Is it touch? Yes, it's touch screen. So there's that, and then we have another screen here, so a triple screen, very similar to a lot of Honda products and Subaru products with triple screens. It just gets a little bit too much because I don't know, uh, you know, where, where I should be looking, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I'm just going to leave that where it's at. We have some volume here, uh, some more controls. I do like, I really like this actually, the placement of your uh, climate control. Very simple, very easy to get to, and I've never actually seen it vertically, vertically stacked. Usually it's horizontally stacked, so they did a great job here. Inside here we have a 12 volt um, and little storage container. Uh, this is going to control things um, probably on your screen up here. So it's, it's kind of confusing because it's a touch screen as well as um, this little joystick uh, swivel control as well. So that's, that's kind of confusing. I don't know which one I should be using, but that's okay. Drive modes. Okay, so let's just look through this. This is pretty cool. So eco mode, snow mode. I like this quite a bit, and I like the uh, little animation it has on there. Um, we're gonna put it in sport mode, and that's what we're mostly gonna drive today, to be honest. Um, well, we do have some more climate controls. So you can see how it's a dual, but we have some circulation options here as well as uh, your defrost as well as just on or off. So I really like that uh, setup to be honest. Cup holders here. I feel like this is a, some wasted space. They could have not stylized this so much and given us maybe some more compartments for storage. So looking in here, looks like uh, we have a USB um, extender. A couple USBs down there. Let's see if you guys can see. A couple USBs auxiliary video in. Whoa, two 12 volts? Heck yeah. So I have three 12 volts here in the front. That is crazy, crazy cool. Uh, very, very impressed with that feature. Um, here's your glove box. Nothing special about that. The dash here, sort of soft, soft touch here. That same material up here on the dash. So <clears throat> overall, it's, I, I like the interior. Again, not the, the highest quality materials. Um, and it would take some getting used to with this three, three screen layout. Uh, but overall, they did a pretty good job. Really good job on the paddle shifters. Um, <clears throat> really good job with the climate control. The connectivity in this car is A+. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop in the back. So getting in the back, I know this car, ooh, 
that was kind of a tight squeeze. It's not nearly as spacious as a Lexus ES uh, in terms of legroom. Seat wise, I think think we might be. Someone left their mail in here. But overall, it's it's okay. I mean, the materials are okay. The seats are, are actually really comfortable. Back here we have, now this is different. So very similar door design, but you notice back here, this is the same color as the seat. But up there, we have black. So that's just kind of weird how they, they make it different in the back, but um, it's okay. We have some vents back here. Pull this down. Uh, we have an ashtray. Okay, and then these mat pockets, they're, they're doing just well. And we have an armrest here, a pass-through, which is very nifty. And then we have cup holders uh, in the back as well. So leg room, it's a little, little on the short end, but I you know I'm 6'1". I do have lots of leg room, but I'm comparing this to the Lexus ES, which has a little bit more. Uh, the seats are very comfortable, but just remember, if you have someone who's 6'5 back here, they're probably not going to be the most comfortable person. This trunk is a lot, way, way, way smaller than the Lexus ES. You see these big wheel wells back here, quite a bit smaller. It's nice that there's a pass through, but if you remember my G37 coupe video, the, the rear seat completely folded down, which this car does not allow you to do. So that's, that's kind of a disappointment. So just keep in mind if you're looking for this car, the trunk is not very large. So guys, keep in mind this is a used vehicle. Now it only has 41,000 miles on it, but <clears throat> So the steering feels fine. Sport mode takes off very, very quick. Uh, first gear is really responsive with this seven speed transmission, but the, <clears throat> the brakes in this car are already shot. Uh, I don't know why if you're driving this car. So the person who owned this previously must have just been really, really hard on the brakes because I, I mean, the, the rotor feels worn, uh, and I, I hear some grinding going on. Um, and you might be able to, guys, be able to hear that wobble there. But I'm gonna try to, to get past that to give you guys a pretty good review of this video, or of this car in this video. I'm gonna do a quick little acceleration run on the on-ramp in sport mode. Plenty of power. Plenty of power. It's definitely got a lot more juice than an ES 350 comparably to this generation. Now, I'm saying like a 2015, so that's the sixth generation ES. So this car I'm driving right now, as you guys know, is a 2015. Road noise is considerably louder than a Lexus ES, um, which is unfortunate. I was hoping this car would be quieter. It doesn't sound any quieter than like my Toyota Matrix that I drive. My Toyota Avalon seems like a quieter car than this. Um, I, do I know that is absolutely fact? I don't, but it just, it's, it feels and sounds that way to my ear. Road feel out here on the freeway now. I'm just gonna go into normal mode or standard mode is what they call it. It's just definitely not as smooth of a car as the ES at any, any point. It's definitely more sport oriented. But that being said, it, it does an okay job out on the freeway, but the tire noise is really loud in comparison. Um, I know this car is a competitor to the ES, and I have to compare it to that because of price and size, but they're completely, absolutely, completely different cars. Um, Persona-wise and feeling-wise, this feels more similar to the IS, but just kind of blown up and extended. It's not very refined. It's not nearly as smooth as the Lexus ES. Um, if I was comparing these cars, it'd be a no-brainer. The styling on this car is amazing. The performance on it is really good. But the majority of the time, I'm inside the car. And, and the majority of the time, I'm not pushing the car to its, its upper echelon of its limits. So that being said, the Lexus counterpart for me would be more desirable. It's a quieter ride, it's a smoother ride, it shifts smoother, um, better materials on the inside. Um, and this car, it's nice, but it's it doesn't have any of the same characteristics or personality of a Lexus ES. Now the 2019 ES 
has upped its game considerably in the performance standpoint. You'll get refined smooth, smoothness, luxury. Um, now I've been in a new Q50 and that car is, is better than this uh, by a little bit. The engine is a lot better. It doesn't have quite as much power like I mentioned, but it, it's, it has more uh, torque, which is what most people need from for stop and go traffic and acceleration, it's about torque. Um, so we're gonna do a quick um, 60 to 80 test right here, going uphill, hit the throttle. Shifting took about a half second to get there, and there's 80. Power is very, very good, very adequate. Um, and it reminds me, of course, a lot of that G37 Coupe that I reviewed, which I like that car a lot better than this one in terms of um, just overall feel. It felt better, it rode nicer, it was a little bit quieter. The looks on this car, don't get me wrong, are maybe better, but that, that G37 uh, Coupe was a very beautiful car in its own right and from its own time period. Now that I've been driving on the freeway for a little bit longer, the ride is noticeably bumpy. I'm not in sport mode or anything, I'm just in standard mode. So the ride is pretty bumpy. It's mo the, road, the tire noise and the road noise is, like I said, considerably louder than any Lexus I've ever been in. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, its nature is very sporty. So it's, it's hard to compare something that's so refined with something that's more sport oriented. It kind of feels like a BMW, but not nearly as sporty, right? Um, the interior is similar in quality to a BMW. And I'm gonna get on the brakes here. The brakes are very strong, even though, like I said, I have at least one one brake pad that's completely worn, or at least it feels like it, or, or a warped rotor. So the brakes are very strong. I would give them an A and I would just die to know what it would feel like uh, with full, you know, full capacity. Acceleration on this car, in my opinion, is really, really good. Excellent. Uh, I'd give it an A for the segment. It's better than the Lexus ES. Uh, probably still better than the, 20, uh, the 2019 Lexus ES, but I'd still take that one, of course, every time, just because it's a newer car, it's better in every single way, other than maybe top end performance. Here on the twisties, car is very, very well planted. A little bit of body roll. Seats do a great job, and I don't have that bolstering uh, all the way to the max, and they do a really good job keeping me in place. Definitely handles more like an IS than an ES. Might even, might even handle better than the 2019 ES. Probably not better than the ESF Sport, but man, this all-wheel drive does a really good job in the corners, uh, keeping it, keeping the power down. But very, very impressed. I'm always impressed with Infinity's driving, uh, performance driving, and the characteristics of their cars in terms of performance, right? Does this car feel like a Skyline? Yeah, it does. Does it feel like a luxury car? Not really, not really. But let's go ahead and sum up this video. Overall, the Q50S is an amazing performing vehicle. It's very sporty, the suspension's pretty good. The all-wheel drive system is phenomenal. Uh, the transmission does a really great job, quick upshifts especially. And this 3.7 liter uh, V6 from Nissan slash Infiniti does an amazing job. Uh, very well balanced. Um, I can't wait to drive some more. And I've driven the the 2018 Q50 with a three liter turbo. That car is just as much fun, if not a little bit more fun than this car uh, with a little bit better interiors. But the Lexus car is on a different realm in terms of luxury, comfort, uh, refinement. It's quieter, it rides smoother. And the 2019 ES, which I shouldn't be comparing to, but it's fresh in my mind, just does most things better than this car. Unfortunately, you can't get the ES in all-wheel drive, so if you need that, give this one a very good look because it's a great vehicle. If you don't really care about refinement and luxury, if you care about performance, having a luxury brand, 
uh, and just over a great overall vehicle, especially in the handling and performance division. Look at this car. Let me know what you guys would pick down below. Would you pick it a Lexus ES that's more in the luxury and refinement and smoothness, or would you pick this Infiniti Q50 all-wheel drive that's definitely more sport oriented? I'll see you in the next video.